Welcome to the IT Free Training video on the features of Active Directory Federation Services. This video will look at features and differences between the different versions of Active Directory Federation Services available from Microsoft. By the end of this video, you will know which features are available and which operating systems you will need to use in order to get these features. The first version I will look at is version 3.0. This is the latest version of Active Directory Federation Services. In order to use it, you will need to be using Windows Server 2012 R2. There are some additional features added in this release. First, there is a feature called Workplace Join. Workplace Join is designed to allow mobile devices like Apple's iOS and Windows based devices to access Windows based services. For example, you could use your mobile device to access files and folders on the company's network. It can also be used on operating systems like Windows 8.1. When this video was created, Samsung had just added support for Workplace Join to one of its devices. So, by the time you watch this video, there may be some support for some Android mobile devices. The easiest way to think of Workplace Join is to think of it as a lighter version of joining a computer to the domain. Once a device has been registered with Workplace Join, it can access some of the features like files and folders just like a domain computer could. However, other features like group policy are not available. The concept behind Workplace Join is just like a computer in a domain. The user only needs to sign in once to gain access to all the resources on the network. The next new feature is Enhanced Access Control for Reduced Risk Management. This is a whole heap of new features designed to make Active Directory Federation services more secure, depending on the needs of the organization. For example, if you have a sensitive application, you can configure it to always prompt the user for credentials when it is accessed. If you decide to use Workplace Join, you also have the option to disable the mobile device's access if required. There are also additional options, for example, configuring when multi factor authentication will be used. The next new feature is Simplified Deployment Experience. This makes ADFS easier to install than previous versions. The most noticeable feature is that it no longer requires IIS. Having not to install IIS reduces the attack surface of the server. It also makes it easier to install on a domain controller, though in a production environment I would not recommend this, however sometimes it cannot be helped. The next feature is that the user interface includes the ability to configure SQL Server. This makes it easier to configure and use ADFS with SQL Server than in previous versions. Lastly, there is built in support for Group Managed Services Accounts. In Windows Server 2008 R2, Microsoft introduced the Managed Service Account. This is a service account in which Active Directory manages the password for the administrator. Although useful, these can be difficult to set up and use. With Windows Server 2012 R2, the process of using a Group Managed Service Account is very simple and the same Group Managed Service Account can be used on multiple servers. Using Group Managed Service Accounts makes the server a lot more secure as Active Directory will change the password used at periodic times and uses very complex passwords. There are also some changes to ADFS 3.0 from the previous versions. First, the Federation Service Proxy component has been moved to the Remote Access role. With the move, it has also changed its name to Web Application Proxy. This provides the same reverse proxy functions as before, that is, can be installed in a DMZ to allow access to a Federation server located on the internal network from the Internet. This helps keep the Federation server more secure. With ADFS 3.0, there are also some features that have been removed. Primarily among these are the web agents. These have been available since the first release of ADFS. These are not used as much nowadays and thus may be why Microsoft decided to remove them in 3.0. The next two versions of ADFS that I will look at are 2.1 and 2.0. There is not too much difference between the two, so I have grouped them together. ADFS 2.1 is included with Windows Server 2012. 
When compared to 2.0, there are only very minor changes. For this reason, it is considered by most that the only difference is that it is included with Windows Server 2012 rather than being a download, like in Windows Server 2008. If you do decide to migrate from 2.0 to 2.1, you should only experience very minor issues, if any at all. Version 2.0 of ADFS is available for Windows Server 2008 and Windows Server 2008 R2 as a free download from Microsoft. With the release of 2.0, there are some additional features that have been added. First, there is web support across domains. If you are planning to use ADFS between domains, this is a useful feature. Most people tend to think of Active Directory Federation services for accessing resources outside the company. However, it can also be used for company users to access internal applications, including those running in different domains. The next new feature is improved Federation Trust support. This is particularly important if you are connecting to non-Windows Federation systems. It does this by adding support for industry standard metadata formats. The last change is the improved management interface. This change makes it easier to configure Active Directory Federation services. There are also some features that have been removed. The first feature that has been removed is using ADLDS as an account store. ADLDS is still supported as an attribute store. However, in most cases, you will use a domain controller to authenticate users when using Active Directory Federation services. The next feature that has been removed is support for Windows NT token based web agent. This will only be an issue if you are using the web agents. The only noticeable difference between ADFS 2.1 and ADFS 2.0 is that the in place upgrade from ADFS 1.1 is not available in ADFS 2.1. If you want to upgrade to version 2.1 of ADFS, you will need to perform a migration. If you are using ADFS 1.1, you can perform an in place upgrade to version 2.0. The last two versions that I will look at are 1.1 and 1.0. If you are using Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2008 R2, 1.1 is included with the operating system. If you are using Windows Server 2003 R2, 1.0 is available as a free download. Either version provides basic ADFS functionality, that is, a single sign on service. With the first release of Active Directory Federation services from Microsoft, there were some compatibility problems with non Microsoft Federation systems. This was fixed in version 2.0. Well, that covers it for all the different versions of Active Directory Federation services. I hope you found this video informative and I hope it helps you make the right decision about which version you want to use. Until the next free video from us, thanks for watching and see you next time.